And we're live on a Tuesday evening, night, whatever it is. It's night. Consider it night. Is it evening or night? Eight o'clock. I would say night. That's what I'm thinking. I think after like seven thirty, well, especially during the winter when it gets dark at five o'clock, I'd call that night. <laughs> yeah. I, I think for me, I think of anything after seven as night. Five would be that. four. Five would be evening. Four is still afternoon. <laughs> this is this is an odd way for us to start. Welcome to Scruffy City Aquatics live stream. We're glad that you're here. Thank you to everyone who's already in the chat and uh, with us. I see you there, uh, TJ Autocross uh, Basement Aquatics with Dave, Netfish, and Chill. <laughs> <I laughs> welcome, like it. welcome. And to all of you on the replay who are here watching this recording of our live stream, we missed you, but we're glad that you're here now checking out the uh, checking out the video. I'm going to have a, a little bit of a surprise tonight that we've been work we've been planning. We've not been working. Uh, well, Tanner's been working on it. I've well, been planning. Well, if anything, it's a it's a lack of work was the preparation for this. <laughs> <laughs> that's true so if um if you have trouble hearing tanner we are having a little bit of a mic issue um he, we can generally hear him when he's in a certain specific location <laughs> but um just you'll you'll see it here in a minute you it'll it'll make more sense here in a moment i saw the notification go out that we're live so we are just waiting on a few more to come in and we'll start the conversation um, on maintain. Uh, before we do that, though, I figured we'd just catch up a little bit. We did not, uh, Tanner and I were not on uh, last week together. However, we did meet up last week while Tanner was in town. Uh, swapped a few things and then went over to Aquatic Marine and walked around for a little while. Talked to Kenny and Isaac there at Aquatic Marine. And uh, I think Tanner bought some fish. Yeah, I picked up that uh, peacock gudgeon. It's still doing well, trying to get some weight on it. It's a little skinny, but that's to be expected. Yeah. All Things Fish is here. Hello, All Things Fish. Evening. Yeah, I just picked up a few things that I needed. Um, I did pick up one item that I'm going to do a review on. It's not a big item or anything, but uh, it's something that I came across that I really like. And it's something that I use quite frequently. So I picked up an additional size and uh, plan on doing a review. We'll see. We'll see how that goes. I've not done a lot of reviews yet. Actually, I don't know that I've done any reviews. So um, <laughs> we'll, we'll see. Let's see what else happened. Uh, I've got sword tail fry all over the place, and I've yeah, been collecting awesome. them. I've got like half a dozen that I collected that I know are sword the red sword tail, um, and there's a few more because the pineapples. I knew the I knew the pineapple sword tails were about to uh, drop some fry too. So I've been watching, and once I saw fry, I started dipping them out. But they were they're really dull colored, so. I messaged Curtis and was like, hey, are pineapple sword tails really kind of drab when they're born? And um, I sent him a picture and he's like, ah, I don't know that that's it, but it doesn't really look like a molly. It, I could have got some mollies. The, you know, there's always molly fry showing up in that tank. So uh, <laughs> I've got two mollies left in that tank um, other than some fry. Speaking of pineapple sword tails, I picked up a trio of those from uh, the Music City Aquarium Society meeting this past Saturday. We had the pleasure of John Tyler with Select Pets speaking on Xiphophorus. I'm I butchered any uh, live bears, <laughs> uh, platies, and sword tails. So I picked up some of those from him, and it was a good meeting. Had a few uh regulars that were missing due to some the flu going around which is it's going around it's crazy everybody yeah it's been rough it's been rough for sure um i'm gonna 
I'm in a different location uh, from me trying something different. Uh, Dave says, is it just me or are you guys not on camera? We were not on camera. It was not just you. Um, I was giving Tanner a moment and then I forgot. <laughs> I forgot <laughs> to switch it over. So we still had the, uh, the thumbnail up. So thank you, Dave, for being part of the live stream, participating. I appreciate that. TJ says there they are. Um, yeah. <laughs> All right. So tonight we're going to be talking about maintenance, aquarium maintenance. Um, it feels kind of odd for me because I'm in a different place. I thought I'd try this out. I don't know if I like it or not. Uh, this is the corner where I work and I feel like I brought my hobby into my job and I don't know that I like it. And um, I got to look up here at you because the, the monitor's down low and that's going to throw me <laughs> off all night. <laughs> that's why I was hesitating earlier. I was like, I can't look at my monitor and the camera at the same time. It's odd. Um, so yeah, that's going on. Um, and Tanner is not on screen because we're looking at his tank. This is a 40 gallon tank, right? Yeah, it's a 40 breeder with a uh, sump below it that's about 30 30 ish gallons so all in all the system's about 70 gallons yeah we've seen pictures of this tank I, I know you've shared pictures of this tank over on your instagram um i'd plug that if i knew what it was it's uh tk aquascaping on instagram i don't that's it have the link to send in the chat, but it's the same name as, as what I'm under on here. Yeah. Yeah. It's a beautiful tank. You've let it go a little bit. Um, we could say you did that on purpose, but the truth be is that the holiday you were out of town a little bit. And before that you were busy working and getting ready for the holiday. So there was a, a little bit of plan neglect going on and you, we had already talked about doing this and one of us doing maintenance on our tank while um, we talked about tank maintenance and you were like, I've got the perfect tank. It'll be ready. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. This is about two and a half, three weeks of, water change only one water change and just letting the plants just grow like crazy and they have grown normally i keep everything trimmed about this height and right now about half the stem plants are coming out of the water so it's it's, the, it's in need of a trim and, yeah. and good maintenance session well you're going to get started on that while we have the conversation we're hoping we're going to be able to still communicate um, despite the, uh, the, the, we're not able to get his, uh, his headphones to work. So, um, I may have to, to call you back in to give us a little bit of feedback. Hopefully you've got a towel in the floor for when those drops hit and you don't get in trouble. <laughs> like I often do because there's water in the floor. Yes. Those I saw of us where, who, I saw where those Dave of us who our hobby is not in a basement. <laughs> Sorry, man. What were you saying? Oh, I saw where Dave with uh, Basement Aquatics added a uh, towel rack to his uh, fish room, which I think is an excellent idea. You can never have too many, too many towels. Yeah, that is a great idea. I have a roll of towels that I keep underneath my tank. I also have like regular towels, but I do keep paper towels. But it would it would be a good idea to like put one uh, uh, some kind of roll under there. I could use a what are they called? Those easy strips that you can pull off. It's not supposed to pull the paint, but it does pull the paint. Those kind of things. I can put that underneath there. Oh, yeah, the uh, command strips. Command strips. That's what I was looking for. I see. All right. I got the updated notes. I can stop style, stalling <laughs> while I waited on our notes app to, to get me what I needed. <laughs> Before, before we dive in, and I've already said that too many times, I'm sure. But before we dive in, I do want to let everyone know it is December. And uh, Fish Fam Christmas is currently getting ready. I don't think, I, I don't know when things officially kick off. But I know it's this month. Um, 
and we are participating in Fish Fam Christmas. So what that means for those of you who are with us that maybe have not been to a live stream that participated in Fish Fam Christmas, one live stream this month, there, we will have a special guest, and that guest will be bringing presents. But we do not know when that's going to happen. So uh, that will be happening across the Fish Fam uh, over here on YouTube. So you should be checking out as many of the live streams as possible if you want to want to win some great gifts. Definitely. Yeah. I'm Zen Ginger really is here after cleaning up after school. Welcome to the Zen Ginger, our wonderful mod. Thankful for everything she does. Yep. Looks and like we've got John with, with Select Pet. Yeah, John's saying kicks off the 18th. So that's possible. <laughs> I should have read that part of the email. I think it was in the email, John. I, I think that is correct. Um, but yeah, so expect something magical to happen at some point this month. But uh, But we don't know when. I see Nancy B is here. I was about to say, I think Nancy B was already here, but I think I spoke to Nancy. Oh, but Nancy B was already here. Okay. You were here. Uh, also, fishfam.link, great resource if you're not using it. If you're here on the replay, if you were to go to fishfam.link, create you a an account, or I think you can, if you've got a YouTube login, you probably do if you're watching on YouTube, you can... Uh, sync that i wanted to say link and that's not right you can sync that and you get notifications like when i go live or when other people in the fish fam go live you'll you'll get that notification so that uh, you can sit in on that live stream it's a great resource i check it out often uh, i was looking at it the other day because i was trying to figure out if we could move our live stream to another day and there's not any time that that lines up for us So what are we doing on the maintenance? Have you got anything started? No, I've not got anything started, but I'm about to. So okay. the first thing I normally do when I'm doing tank maintenance is just take one of these uh, melamin, melanin sponges and scrub the front glass, side glass, hit the back glass occasionally, but I'm not going to be doing that tonight because there's not much on it. But so I'm going to go ahead and get started with that. All right. No. Jimmy P dropped in to let us know he's going to catch the replay. So Jimmy P, when you're listening to this on the replay, we appreciate you. Thank you for coming by. And uh, thank you for always being awesome. I've got, and I've got a backlog of replays I've got to get through. Uh, Select Pet says Fish Fam Christmas details are on Fish Fam Link too. I should be able to check that out while we're doing this. My before we got started, my light quit working on me. Just further, just, just more obstacles. <laughs> Let's see. I was able to, uh, you know, me and duct tape have been uh, pulling some overtime this week and I got it working. Let's see. John, I don't know where that's at. I'm on the news. I don't see it there. Hold up. I got an email. I'll just look at the email. <laughs> More duct tape. Yeah. Keep keeping aquatics. Uh, I had a uh, had a blowout on my air pump yesterday uh, evening. No, night before. Yeah, I got the new one yesterday. So the night before, late in the evening, and it, the plastic piece just broke. The part where the uh, the air hose connects just broke. I, I can't explain it. I have no idea what happened. Like what could have hit it? Now it, it had been running for three at least three years. I, I was looking today. I, I think. The 75 has actually been up longer than three years. I realized that uh, talking with someone. But, yeah, uh, I did have to duct tape it to get it to work for a little while while I uh, uh, got another air air pump. So it's running now. And actually, 
replacing that old air pump, whew, the new one's putting out some air. A lot of air. It's surprising. One thing, <clears throat> not to interrupt, but I always do when I'm doing maintenance is I have one of these, just like an old baking sheet, just to have all the different tools on there. And whenever I trim, helps me organize what all that I've trimmed out of the tank. And then normally I replant it tonight. It's going in the sump and getting replanted later. Yeah, I do something similar to that. I have the 32 gallon trash cans lid and I use that for for it i'll put some paper towels down and just pour a little bit of water in there so i know it's it's staying wet all right i have found my email but i'm not going to look through it any longer because i don't see a date and it's not that important it's coming up there'll be announcements <laughs> Oh, Nancy. Oh, no. I finally made the mistake everyone always talks about today. I overfilled my 55. Yeah, That's not long so ago, fun. I was using um, I was using my Python to fill up the 25 gallon, and that fills up significantly quicker than the 75. And I got it right to the glass. I did catch it though. Yeah, get us in there mm, a little bit closer. That's really not. That, I've got the tank lights turned down to two percent, and they still just will not. I've got the camera brightness turned down. I don't know what it is, but what I'm going to start doing now is just work, basically left to right on all these stems, trim them, get them out of the tank, and then see kind of where we're at. I think I'm going to have to end up replanting pulling out the bottoms and replanting a lot of the tops, especially on the Ludwigia Super Red to the far, I guess, left on the screen. Mm -hmm. But it is yeah, just... the top left corner. It is just a mass of, of plants right now. It's ridiculous. Oh, is that the Super Red right there? I thought it was in the left corner. Oh, it's in the left. I'm starting over here. This is okay. Ludwigia uh, Acruata. Okay. I don't know how to say it properly, but with a trim and maintenance session like this, I'm really just going to chop it pretty low and do, do a little bit of shaping, but not much. I'll do that at the end. Yeah, Keep Keeping Aquatics says, makes me grateful. I use a one-gallon pitcher and a hand pump siphon to do water changes. It's a lot of work, but if anything overfills, it's the pitcher and not a huge mess. That sounds like a lot of work. I did use a five gallon bucket or multiple five gallon buckets for a long time. Um, but after having the 75 for a short time, um, I got the 32 gallon for like the 32 gallon trash can for father's day or something. <laughs> they were <laughs> like, what do you want? I was like, I want a trash can. <laughs> And that's that's one of the most useful items in my uh, in my hobby. Oh yeah, those trash cans are awesome. We used to have those on. You, you know, you can get the wheels for them. We would use those at uh, the store I used to work at. Oh but, yeah, mine has wheels. What I do for water changes is I've just got this hose you can see here, and it runs either outside or into the bathtub. Here, I can I can make your screen bigger. But I'm just kind of go. going in right now and just chopping everything down, not really being too careful with it. Because I know I've got plenty to replant if I need while, to. All right. So while you're doing that, let's talk about maintenance. We we kind of brainstormed a little bit, just trying to think about what our normal maintenance is like. And we try to divide it up into daily, weekly, monthly, and semi-monthly, and quarterly. Um, we also had a category for yearly, and we, neither one of us came up with anything. So <laughs> there's not anything we do We do yearly. I know some people probably do canister filters annually, not yearly. We'll call it annually because that sounds a lot better. But uh, not us. We'll talk about that. I've got to know. Um, 
you got two crypts here on the front. Is the one the second one from the right the flamingo? This right here? Yeah. Yes, that's the pink flamingo, and it's not showing up too well because of how I've got the lighting on, but it is uh, – I've got about uh, five or six little plants now. I started out with one several so – probably half a year ago, so they grow pretty slow. Yeah. But it sure beautiful. is hugging the uh, substrate, so you've got a good light on there. What light do you have on this tank? This tank has the Chihiros uh, WRGB2. Um, it's not the latest one that's out. The latest is the the Pro, but this is mm. the 2. And I re it's by far my – it's expensive, but it's my favorite lot I've ever used. Yeah. Um, Nancy, don't sweat it. That doesn't make you unsmart. Uh, you know, I've come close several times, and I'm sure most people in the hobby have overflowed their tanks. So uh, you, you're okay there. Don't beat yourself up. I keep, flooded keep an entire water. store once, so I would not <laughs> uh, beat yourself up over that. <laughs> keep Keeping Aquatics wants to know, how long did it take you to grow out the plants in your tank? So first of all, how long has this 40-gallon been set up? Let's see. It's probably been set up for about four months now. Okay. Um, these all plants that you had before, like did they all go in at one time or did they go in a few at a time? For the most part, everything went in at once. It was from a previous setup. Okay. But over time, I've added and uh, tweaked things before. What I'm trimming right now is the Rotala H-Raw. It's really similar to Rotala Rotundifolia. It just gets a lot more red. Okay. Under higher lighting and lower nitrates. So it's not looking too red right now because I have not been keeping up with uh, my water changes. Mm -hmm. So my nitrates are a little high right now, probably in the 20 to 30 range, if I had to guess, which is not a bad range. But with this plant, it just won't get as dark if you're yeah. above like 10. Oh, wow. Above 10. Okay. That's when you get it like super red. So um, we'll see what this looks like when you're done. How long has it been? How long did it take it to go from a trim to overgrown? Um, the stems will get overgrown in about two weeks. They'll start coming from this level where I'm trimming now. They'll start coming out of the water. Um, but I generally try to trim probably every two weeks. Um, if not, if I get the chance, I'll trim do small trimming um, weekly just because I think that's a better way to go as far as keeping the plants healthier is less massive trimmings and more smaller ones. Okay. Kane, uh, Keeper Kane is here. Welcome, Kane. Good Welcome, Kane. Hope you're doing well. John says he saw someone put a uh, siphon in the toilet. That, that was me. Like a bad idea. Probably. I did that at the first uh, Music City meeting. Oh, you put it in the toilet at work? Yes. <laughs> That's the only <laughs> only place I have to drain it. Good thing is once it it'll once the toilet gets to a certain level, it just flushes pretty much on its own. So were you were you was it close enough to where you were talking and then occasionally you would just hear the toilet flush? Uh, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. That's great. But. So daily maintenance in our conversation, in our notes here, we have feeding our fish. Um, I do feed daily. Now I do give my fish a, um, a rest day on food. I don't feed like I don't feed every day, every now and then uh, no more than once a week, probably not that often but I try to give them a day where, where they're not getting fed. Now, if there's a lot of fry that I'm trying to keep, I might try to feed the fry specifically with some fry food or something. Yeah, I sort of do the same thing. Uh, one day a week I won't feed, and then 
I alternate. I'll do, say, three days out of the week feed flake and pellets, and then two two days feed um, brine shrimp or blood worms. Most of the time, yeah. a combination just to give them a little a little treat. Yeah, that's what I do. Kane gave me um, the good idea to mix because you know um, I, I feed extreme flakes, so I like the krill flake, and then because I have live bears. I try to make sure they get the spirulina flake as well. And, you know, they have a community flake that they've put out now. And he made the comment, he just mixes the the krill and the spirulina. I was like, I could totally do that because I was alternating between those. So I just have them mixed up. Of course, I keep a big container in my freezer uh, to try and keep it fresh longer. And I pour it into a medium-sized container that I feed from. Yeah, That's I've got I've got one little uh, container that I keep that anytime I get sort of low on the food, I just kind of dump it in. So it's like a mixture of four or five different foods. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Kane, Kane's agree, and he does that too. One fasting day a week. I, that's what I try to do. It's I doubt it's every single week, but I try to remember. I used to keep a schedule where I literally had the days of the week written down on a board in my uh, in my tank stand, and I would feed specific foods on certain days. And uh, I don't do that anymore, but I, I do keep a variety. You know, frozen baby brine, frozen uh, blood worms the flakes. And then I also like a extremes nano. I've been feeding that for a long time and especially for fry. Uh, Cause you can just kind of, you can pulverize it between your fingers and it's just like a fry food. Um, fish fam Christmas is here. Welcome fish fam Christmas. I put, and this is because I wanted to talk about this briefly. Uh, I put fertilize on here for daily because at one point I was trying to do this. I saw it in a video. And so I took, I, I calculated or I calculated. It wasn't a lot of calculating. I'm making it sound like more work than it was, but <laughs> before I was doing two pumps in my 70 or I was not two pumps, two pumps per gallon or 10 gallons per 10 gallons. I cannot talk tonight. I was putting 14 pumps in the 75 uh, every week. So I just divided that out and, uh, and just did it every day. And I've started to see algae. So I'm not doing that anymore, but I've heard for, uh, for some people that work did not work for me. Paul is here just popping in to say hello. Hey Paul. Glad Welcome. To pop by. One thing I will say, and I use these quite a bit are these little, uh, like, Real small, almost spring scissors. Mm -hmm. You can get them on, off of Amazon for a couple bucks. They're just a lot easier on your hands if you're trimming a lot versus the big, you know, aquascaping scissors because yep. they'll just spring back. And you can also kind of do more targeted trimming. Yeah. Those big ones are good to get something down in the bottom, but um, a lot of times there's – they're kind of in the way, especially if you have a lot of hardscape and stuff you're trying to, to get around. Yeah. These are really nice. Cause I can just work in and around the hardscape and not worry about banging into everything. Also on our daily maintenance, we put in joy because I think that's important for us as hobbyists is that we take the time every day to enjoy our tanks. Now, sometimes, you know, that's a quick glance, just kind of looking over everything and, and enjoying it. And sometimes that's, you know, and uh, an intentional sit down and stare at the tank for a little while. And uh, it's important to enjoy your tanks. And, and what's funny is sometimes I feel like the 75 looks horrible and I'm done with it. Right. And someone will see a picture and comment on it online or someone at work, because I keep a uh, screen or not a screensaver, my backgrounds on all my monitors switch around between, um, pictures of my tank. And so people will comment and I'll, you know, get to talk about the tank a little bit. And that always just gets me, you know, excited about the tank again. So enjoy your tank every day. Definitely. I try to always not ever, I don't get to do it every day, but a couple times a week, just sit down 
and watch my tanks because you really learn a lot from it. You know, you'll notice things that you won't see when you're just glancing at the tank or just doing a little bit of maintenance. So it's and also, I mean, that's the whole point of it is to sit there and enjoy it. And it's just so relaxing. All right, we've got I've got a very detailed question for you. It's it's in two parts from okay. All Things Fish. I've never looked into the specifics of specifics of nitrate limitation to enhance red coloration. I would think that as long as there are any nitrates, then there wouldn't be limitation. Have you have you seen specific numbers as far as how low to keep nitrates to see enhanced reds? To me, if there are any nitrates in the water column, then there are more than enough nitrates for the plants. Yeah, that definitely makes sense. And I'm not probably educated enough to fully answer that. But for the most part, I think if you keep it around 10 or, or lower, um, you'll start to see those more intense reds. And that's just a blanket statement. There's other plants that, you know, will get red at different nitrate levels. But around 10 or less is what I've commonly seen in the hobby. Um, that being said with the, the part with there being nitrates in the water, all there should be, I think it really depends more on the uptake rates of everything else. So if you've got faster growing plants, they can uptake that nitrate quicker and the, um, other plants won't have as much access to it, but that's, that's, that's just almost a guess for me. Um, I will say that the kind of theory behind the nitrate limitation causing more intense reds is generally, you know, you think about it, nitrates push your green growth. Um, you know, back a couple weeks ago when we talked about our um, fertilization uh, and nutrient deficiency um, stream, talked about how you'll see yellowing and leaves falling off when you have too, low, you know, insufficient nitrates but they, they, cause they also cause that green growth and lower nitrates and higher lighting really helps bring out those reds. Um, and the higher lighting is a huge factor because you can almost think of the reds coming out as almost a natural, um, sunblock or response to too much lighting. That means that the plants are getting a sufficient lighting so much that they don't need to, they, they can't uptake any more and they just turn more red as a sort of a defense mechanism almost. And that may be not, may not be the proper term for it. So does th this tank has CO2 on it, right? Yes. So, so you're limiting the growth a little bit in these plants um, by the, by the fertilizer, possibly potentially. And that's also causing that. Right. Yeah. I would say at this point in this tank, I've actually got some nutrient deficiencies, which are kind of showing up on the hydrophilia pinnatophyta or pinnatophyta. And then also this bacopa, um, not bacopa, I'm sorry, retala bonsai in the center right here. You see, I've got some of the, might not be able to see, but some of the older growth is starting to get a little scraggly and die off. And I believe that's because of a lack of nutrients. Mm -hmm. I should just pull some out. Dry it off so I'm not getting water everywhere. Yeah, All Things Fish says that uh, he feels like he gets enough reds um, without attempting nitrate reduction. So I've never looked into limitation itself much. Seems like it's may only be really viable short term. Uh, you've been doing this with this tank for a while now. Yes, I would say this tank has been here. Um, this is the third or fourth scape I've done with this tank. And I generally follow the sort of that lean dosing method to where I don't want, if I was dosing high amounts of fertilizers, I, this tank would grow like this every week. And I just, I like it, but I cannot maintain that much growth. Yeah, and the the growth limitation could be good for some because I know a lot of people want to keep stem plants and and have that beautiful, um, you know, to to have you know the, those full stems, but get tired of cutting them back all the time. So I could see some people really you know giving that a try and it working for them. Not for everybody though, I'm sure. 
that's, yeah, that's really, one of the fun things about the hobby is there's different, you know, there's different ways to, to do it and, to, and to enjoy it. But I'll show this in just a moment after I get done trimming, you may be able to see, but a lot of this Ludwigia super red, it's definitely due um, to be the bottoms need to be pulled up and the tops replanted because bottoms are real scraggly and not a lot of leaves on them. I can say that that's one thing where that's one area where I messed up when I was trying to do stems. Uh, the tops continued to grow, but the bottom did get real leggy. And then I didn't realize that I needed to cut off the tops and, and to make that change. So that's something that is definitely important for some of those plants. Ed had commented wondering where we were. So I threw us up there for a little bit, uh, but I wanted to zoom in on what you were doing again. Yeah, I'm just trimming. Well, I'm not this been saying hi to everybody. <laughs> super red. Yeah, and I apologize. I can't really see the chat with the way I'm working on this. So if I don't say hey, I apologize. Well, and that's where I've I've let us down by not not pointing out that <laughs> actually I even said it in the chat. But Chattanooga Ed is here. Welcome, Chattanooga Ed. And then I Whoa. also saw Lady Rorschach's here. No need All to apologize. Right. We're just glad you're here. So I think I've got the bulk of the trimming done. So I'm going to go ahead and start doing a water change and getting all the little floating bits of plant matter out. All things fish. I am using uh, easy green for my liquid fertilizer and I'm also using the uh, easy root tabs, but yeah, I've, I've slowly, cause I'm trying not to just change it on my tank. Um, however, I really did kind of blow that out of the water over the holidays because <laughs> I missed a few days um, and things got out. So now I'm just doing the uh, the weekly thing like I used to. Speaking of weekly, on our maintenance list for weekly items, we put water changes. We both typically do a water change every week. There are times where you know we'll go an extra week maybe two if if necessary for whatever reason but for the most part we do weekly water changes yeah i typically will do weekly on this particular tank and i've got other tanks which i do maybe monthly and it just depends on how you've got it set up um, this tank because i am dosing some ferts and other tanks i don't the nitrates will creep up on me. Um, so I'll tend to do more water changes on this tank just to sort of reset it, those nutrient mm -hmm. levels. And then I've got one tank that I can't tell you the last time I did a water change. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Coral Dullin works. Welcome to the live chat. And thank you for letting us know that Rico's, uh, Focus on with Bunny has ended. That's a, that's one I'm going to have to, to check out. I'm looking forward to that one. Um, we were talking about it earlier today on Afternoon Delight. Well, Rico was talking about it, and some of us were in the chat uh, talking about it as well. But there's just so many live streams going on that it's it's hard. It's impossible to you know to get a schedule where there's not overlap so i hate that there's overlap because especially because i would be there for those shows um and then also you know bentley bentley pascal has started uh at nine o'clock and that's another one that i typically try to go back and watch um i enjoy uh t listening to both of them so i totally understand thank you for coming by and uh th that's one of the things i love about the fish fam is how supportive everybody is Talking about those weekly water changes, um, I did put in the notes some reasons for doing it weekly. Because I know that over the years, I've heard different, there's a lot of different schools of thought on this. Um, you know, some people, their goal is to not do water changes. And honestly, I've been there. I, I did not want to do water changes. Um, and I thought that was a, a, a good goal. Uh, and it can be for many tanks. But um, it's not what worked for the 75 gallon. I'll say that. Um, and that's because there's more reasons than, than just uh, to remove nitrates. That's the main reason 
while we do water changes. You know, if you're doing, um, you know, certain dosing on your fertilizer, then you want to do the water changes in order to bring the nitrates back down. So that is a reason. Uh, catfish Terry too. That's right. Catfish Terry's on all the time. <laughs> I I see those notifications. Uh, but other than other than nitrates, um, you also want to replenish needed nutrients. There, you know, there are nutrients that you're adding through your water um, that are good for the inhabitants. So there's that as well. You want to clean out decaying matter. I just saw you doing this. Uh, you were kind of waving around some of those plants. You're doing it right now um, yeah. near the substrate and just kind of getting things moving around and sucking that up. Because if you leave that, that material in there, that dying plant matter in there, uh, it is going to cause algae or, or other issues. Yeah. And I've, I've seen tanks where, you know, they purposefully leave, um, try to build up that detritus layer, but that, you know, I, I just don't, like the look in tanks like this i like the clean sand but really at most i'll just kind of do this you know brush over the plants kind of kind of try and get everything because I, I found when you have a lot of matter plant decaying matter sitting on your plants that's when you'll definitely get a lot of some algae growth in those areas mm -hmm. um, for example i know a lot of people struggle with getting hair algae and whatnot on their java moss or, or mosses and in my mind, a lot of that is just because you java moss pulls in, you know, it's almost acts like a filter mm -hmm. and it just latches on to so much organics that can cause that algae. Yeah. Keep keeping aquatic says, um, I think it's part of the fun. I sometimes have to force myself to do it, but it is quite satisfying. And I think it may boost my mood. I agree. I agree. I enjoy my water changes, uh, over the weekend. Um, I've had people comment before, you know, how much work is keeping a tank like that? I, it's not that much. You know, I feed just about every day. I put fertilizer in, you know, a couple times a week and then I change the water weekly and they're like, Oh no, I'd never want to do that. And I'm like, it's, there's something about it. That's kind of therapeutic. Yeah. I doing tank maintenance is quite honestly, one of my favorite parts of the hobby. Um, just yeah. tweaking things, you know, it's, it's just really a, honestly a blast. Just it's, it's really cathartic. Just being able to sit down, work on the tank and just kind of forget about, everything that's going on for a little bit. Yep. It's true. Is you just kind of enjoying the little world that you put a lot of effort into. And that's, that kind of goes along with what all things fish is saying about the goal of trying to do no water changes. I agree. I don't think it's a good goal. It, it was one point in my hobby where I thought, Ooh, I'd like to be at that point where my closed system, you know, there's, there's enough balance that it just keeps going. I don't know that I'd ever get to the point where I could do that. So it's no longer a goal of mine. Um, but, you know, it is interesting. Some of those uh, tanks that where people are able to make that happen. Okay. That's a bit better. Mitch, you were saying you, you struggle with Java fern. Check, check this one out. Yeah. Windelove. Yeah. Probably the Windelove. Just hides right back in there, glued yep. to a lava rock. It does not like me. Actually, it's doing pretty good in the 25. Oh, awesome. Yeah. I mean, I've lost a few leaves, but overall, it's it's looking better than it than it has in the 75. So uh, I'll continue to let it grow over there. Uh, Keeper Kane, that's exactly right. That's how I feel. I wish I could make more live streams. I try to. And, you know, sometimes you get a few behind and then you just want to catch up with, with where they're at. You don't want to go back until you have time. And sometimes you get time and can go back. But you want to know what's going on now. Uh, there's a lot of live streams like that. I get behind. And I feel bad about it. But that's part of being in the community. Uh, you know, I don't think anybody truly gets upset over that not anybody that i've spoken with there may be some people but nobody that i've ever spoken with gets upset about that um everybody understands everybody has that same struggle you want to watch it all and you can't <laughs> yeah Cor cora Dillon uh works 
it is true. You can end up with high phosphates um, if you're not doing your water changes. So it helps with that. Definitely, you want to you want to remove the decaying matter and and the el the toxic elements that can be building up. Uh, also, weekly we put fertilize and then trim plants. Now, I don't typically have to trim plants weekly. Uh, do you trim plants weekly, Tanner? Um, certain ones, yes. I won't do a full blown trim, but I will say that pretty much every week I'm trimming something. It won't, it's definitely not as over the top as this, but I kind of will trim in segments. Like I'll hit part of the stems one week and then the rest the next once they really get up to that height. But as of now, like I could keep doing more, but mainly I'm just going to keep looking at little spots, cleaning up a little bit in the tank and just keep doing the water change. And because I do have a sump underneath that has about 30-ish gallons of water volume. I'd normally take the tank down to about this level just because in reality, it's it's not a huge water change when you factor in the sump. Um, it may look like a lot, but it's really not a ton. It's probably about 30 per, 35, 40%. Um, and I'm doing that much because I haven't done maintenance in a little while. Did we lose Mitch? Uh oh. Let's see. Looking at, got a question from All Things Fish. Mitch Tanner, what are you guys running for filtration on your displays like the one Mitch is showing? Um, so this tank has a sump on it. So it um, basically has some filter, some filter sponges or, you know, the sponge media and then a bunch of the biological ceramic media. Let's see, I lost the question. So probably about once a month, every two months, I'll go in and clean the filter media on this tank um, and replace the kind of polyfill or not really polyfill, but the filter floss that I've got. So it's not a ton of maintenance on this filter. The other tanks I have, I've got sponge filters and canisters. The canisters I do monthly to every three months. And then the sponges every maybe a month, but most of the time they're they're pretty much fine. And then I'll actually I may show it later, but on the sump, I keep a lot of plants in the bottom and basically have if anybody's into salt water, essentially a freshwater refugium to pull excess nutrients out. And it's also nice because I can um, store plant trimmings down there, which I'm going to do tonight because I won't have time to fully plant everything. That would be a several hour endeavor. All right, I may be back. There he is. Yeah, my power just shut off. Like I was sitting in the total oh, darkness no. back here in the corner of my house. That's no good. So I'm going to try to catch up. I, I did pull it up on my phone and uh, and hear a little bit of what you were saying, but I also ran to make sure everything started back up with the tank because, you know, I worry. Yeah. While this is the water's draining, this is a this is the plants that I took out from that trim. So quite a bit. Yeah. Um, now, not all of these are going to go back into the tank, of course. Um, a good bit are actually going to go into the immersed uh, tubs that I've been setting up. I'm doing some little experiments with that and just seeing what I can grow. Stick that guy back in there. Sorry, I'm still scrolling back. All right, I think I found it.
Maybe. And Put one on thing screen. I also do when I finish up with the maintenance is I'll clean the outside of the glass. Um, I actually use those little glass glasses cleaner alcohol wipes um i'll use that just make sure not to get it in the tank or anywhere near the tank and don't put your hands in the tank after using them but they do a really good job of not leaving any streaks on the the, the outside glass terry's tropical tanks is here sorry the dog just come running into the room oh he bumped his head and uh decided to uh to attack me He's a good attack dog. But Terry's Tropical Tanks is here talking about algae being introduced in the system. And yeah, that's true. I mean, the algae has to come from somewhere. Yeah, there are people in the hobby that, that do it. I uh, Like we've said, I, I enjoy doing my water changes. I feel like there's a lot of benefits to them. Um, you want to be careful with how much you can't overdo it. I think I saw Kane say this earlier too. You can overdo it on the water changes. Uh, but again, as we've talked about for weeks, it's all about finding that balance in your tank. Um, you know, you want to find a balance where you're removing the right amount. And, you know, for some people that's, you know, 25, 30% is actually a pretty good number um, that I found works for me. Zen's dealing with some uh, hair algae. I've been doing two, almost 50% water changes a week in my 20 long. No CO2 and a ton of plants. I use the return of the python to leaf blow the debris out. And the hair algae just won't stop. How much leaf debris are you getting? What, what, what kind of plants are, uh, are shedding? Just wondering how much you got. Yeah, and how are the plants doing? Because it could be you're taking too much nutrients out of the water, you know, and you're at that low enough level where the algae can thrive, but your plants aren't doing so well, especially if they're shedding a lot, if, mm -hmm. I, if I understood that correctly. Um, but, yeah, I think, like Mitch, you were saying, that 25 30% is generally what I do. Um, and I don't do it unless I've got a major issue with the tank. I don't do a ton of water changes because I find that keeping the balance or, you know, keeping the, the tank stable is mm -hmm. easier when you don't do a lot of water changes. Yeah. So you, you talked about the filtration on this tank while I was coming back in, I believe. Yes. All right. So Cora Dullen works. Um, I can't get rid of the hair algae either. I reduced my lighting and added floaters and pulled my submersible lights out. All my Java moss died and the hair algae won't stop. So kind of hard to see, but this is the, the sump. Nothing pretty to look at. Um, just got a bunch of plants in there. And then you could, there's my filter media. Um, and then over here, I've got my return pump with the CO2 diffuser going into it. Um, but I mainly just use this area right here to store plant trimmings. Um, and also I keep some fish and shrimp down in here. Yeah. So one of the things we, we talked about um, hair algae and I need to do like videos. I've also thought about, I think John was the one that gave me the idea of doing some clips from our past live streams, but with hair algae, um, reduced my lighting and added floaters and pulled my submersible lights out. So with, with your hair algae, a lot of times for me, anytime I've had it, it has been lighting, but, you know, it, it could be a, a number of things. It, it's an imbalance is what it is. Um, maybe, you know, there's different things you could try with turning down your light. If you, if it's a dimmable, maybe turn it down some, if not, then the duration, how long your light is on. 
Um, I know uh, one way that that I've heard people have success with is to give your plants that break at one point in the day where your lights turn off. If you've got, you know, if, if it's programmable, if it's not, um, you know, the the Wi-Fi uh, plugs are really nice. Um, if my light is programmable, but if it wasn't, that's what I would what I would do. That way I could set it um, to, you know, to always work on certain time on and off. But yeah, lighting is typically the issue. And one thing to remember with fertilizer is if you cut back on the fertilizer, you may do more harm than good um, because you're not feeding those plants and then they're dying back and just fueling the algae um, by, you know, decaying in the water if, if you're not able to get them out. Um, so all that can lead to it. it. It's just finding that finding that balance. I know you're working on it. I'm, I'm trying to go through where everybody's uh, talking about me leaving, being out. <laughs> so all things fish was asking um, more than, more than just how often or what kind of filtration, but how often do you replace media, rinse media? Do you recharge any, do you have anything you recharge? Did you answer that? Yeah, I think so, but I can touch on it again. Um, for this, well, he, so I've got, he was here. I wasn't here. <laughs> um, I, I can't remember how much I went in depth on it, but I've got the coarse media, the coarse filter pads um, in here, and then also the the blue and white kind of filter floss. Now that I'll replace uh, once a month to every couple weeks, but then the coarse filter pads about once a month I'll take them out and just kind of give them a rinse, like you know, squeeze them out in some water, just like you would with a sponge filter. But there's nothing in here that I would recharge necessarily. I don't run any um, resins to pull any any constituents out of the water. Um, and then I've got a couple bags of the biomedia, and that generally it's right under the the inflow into the sump, so it it stays pretty clean, and I don't have to worry about a lot of accumulation of that biofilm. Um, sloughing off it kind of takes care of itself so that really doesn't get pulled often zinni i think you should come out to knoxville for the uh for the christmas party as well ed was inv inviting zen ginger to come to the christmas party everybody's invited <laughs> we are having our 12th meeting of the east tennessee aquatic association and we're having a a, a social for the holiday and it is being held at Aquatic Marine, the store, after hours. So once the store closes down on Sunday, the ETAA gets to play in the store. It's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, that'll be awesome. Unfortunately, I'm not going to make it. No. I know. I've got um, – I have some conflicting dates. My uh, my dad and my sister are coming to Nashville this weekend. And I was, I told him, I was like, well, I'm going to be in Knoxville. And they're like, we're coming to see you. So I was like, <laughs> uh, well, okay. <laughs> so unfortunately I won't be there, but I know it's going to be a blast. Yeah, it is. It's going to be a fun time. All things was asking about, uh, the lens or the splash guard of the light. So I do keep a lid on my tank. And I do have to clean that regularly because it does. I have very hard water. Uh, and when the hard water is not the issue, there's always something green growing up there. Yeah, I um, this tank does not have a lid on it, but the light's a good six inches above the water. So I'll clean it off about every two months, but it doesn't get too much buildup. Now, on other tanks where the lights are closer, I definitely do get a lot of that calcium buildup on the lights. And I'll just, you know, you can take some uh, a rag with some vinegar and wipe it off if it's really stuck on there. But most of the time, I just take this little sponge that I use to clean the glass and wipe it off that way. So yeah, a lot, lot of talk in the chat that has happened about water changes. Um, and yeah, I, I like to use during the summer, spring, and part of the fall, I like to use my water to uh, water my landscape. And we moved into this home just a few years ago. 
and all the neighbors have commented on how quickly the landscaping grew in the, because we planted bushes. There was nothing there. It was all white gravel um, in all of the flower beds. And so uh, everyone has commented on that, and it's all because of uh, the fish water. But during the, um, during the winter months, uh, it gets so cold that's not an option. So it goes down the sink. Yeah, I use mine for uh, my house plants, and then also, like you house said, in the, in the spring through the fall, there's one. I'm I'm in an apartment, but there's one little shrub that's right outside my door on the patio, and I water only it, and just to see because it has gotten so much bigger than the surrounding shrubs. And I'm like, yep, that's that's the aquarium water. It is the best fertilizer for plants, and it's nice too because. A lot of times people will use, you know, tap water to water your plants, but I think aquarium water is better not only because it contains the nutrients, but it also doesn't have chlorine in it. So it's better for the soil um, biology itself. Yeah, I've heard some talk about how the chlorine can actually mess with some plants uh, roots and their uptake. So um, I try to I try to keep water out to water the plants from the tank specifically so that I'm doing that those nitrates definitely help with the uptake terry's tropical tank says most people that say they beat hair algae never had it <laughs> that's true um <laughs> we talked about that a lot when we were doing uh, a series on algae and that you never really get rid of it you're just trying to get to a point where you're happy with where you're at <laughs> and that's the thing too that can be so difficult is i mean algae is, is single celled so you might not see any algae in your tank but it's there it's just not getting enough it's not got the proper conditions for it to take take hold mm -hmm. well we're talking about some tacos and how they make everybody happy this is true tacos do make everybody happy that is very true but what i'm doing right now is just filling up the tank um already put the dechlorinator in there I like to fill up the tanks slow, as slow as possible just to kind of prevent any shock, um, you know, that could occur because your water, you know, your tap water comes from a reservoir, a, a lake, a, you know, a river, something like that. And it's all with the chemistry of it's always changing. So I, I just want to be a little cautious when, do you know, generally it's fine, but I like to do it a little slower. Um, but what I'll do is I will... Um, take pictures i've got before pictures and i'll take after pictures of this tank and i'll post them to the scruffy city aquatics um facebook page so y'all okay. can see what it looks like after a thorough maintenance session i am way behind on the chat trying to catch up thank thank you everyone who's been here and uh participated in the chat and the conversation and watch the maintenance take place on this tank. It's looking good. We only got through weekly. We did not get any further. Of course, the power outage did not help with that. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, monthly, we didn't have a lot. I, I do root tabs typically monthly because my swords need them. Uh, and and you, you added trim plants, uh, which you do apparently weekly and monthly. So, some plants don't grow as fast as others, right? Yeah, so like monthly, I'd be hitting like my Crips, the S Repins, um, Boost, Anubias, you know, taking off any, not necessarily trimming them, but I'll take off any leaves with holes and, you know, anything that just doesn't look right. Um, and then otherwise on monthly, I try to do like a big, like three multi, you know, multi hour maintenance session on the tank just to really, you know, it's, it's, it's a lot easier to just try and be consistent with it than do it all at once. But I, I like to have almost not necessarily reset the tank, but, you know, go through it and clean it real well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That was one of the things that I had on weekly that I don't think I brought up was clean the front glass. You got to clean that front glass weekly. That way you've got a nice clear image into your tank because you yeah. want to be able to see it without spotting some algae <laughs> on the, on the glass, uh, semi-monthly clean sponge filters. I, you know, I know some people go a very long time, uh, without cleaning sponge filters. They can go a very long time. I like to do it every other month. Um, monthly, I think would be too much. I use, I do use the core sponge filters, 
but and then we said quarterly uh, clean canister filters. Um, I know some people go a whole year without it, but I like to toss that stuff and uh, pull out all the little shrimp and add them back to the tank <laughs> that found their way down there. But, um, you know, maintenance is important for your tank. I, I don't think um, I don't think letting maintenance go it has ever been a good thing in my tanks. Uh, you know, anytime I've for whatever reason, be it trying to 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 go a little bit longer um, you know, larger water changes less often. That didn't work well for me either. I tried it all. I've read it all on the internet and I've tried it and I can tell you what did not work for me. That was one of them. Uh, and then also, um, the smaller, more frequent water changes work. So that, that's yeah. what I do. That's what I enjoy. And I just make sure I enjoy my tank while I'm doing it. Yeah. I was, uh, watching a video with one of the, uh, guys who competes in the, you know, the aquascaping competitions and mm -hmm. his methodology was he would do almost daily, you know, five, 10% water changes, just super yeah. small, but it adds up, you know, seven over seven days, that's 70% of the water you're changing out. Um, right. So it's really just keeping consistent. I like to do things weekly, you know, like Mitch was saying, there's weekly, monthly, there's things that you do all the time. I've got a canister filter that desperately needs to be cleaned which this stream has reminded me of so i'm not yeah. uh, looking forward to that yeah you know the last time trying to think it wasn't the last time i cleaned mine because i did do it at the three month mark the time before that it had gone over six months and it was bad i'm sitting so at about six months i think <laughs> yeah it was doing work for sure but we need to wrap this thing up. It is past 930. Thank you, everyone who's hung in there and is still here with us. It's been a fun night. Thank you for joining us. To all of you on the replay, thanks for, uh, for watching. I hope you would consider subscribing to the channel. Um, and, you know, if you haven't already liked this uh, live stream, that would be cool, too. You all have a great evening. Hope you enjoy your tanks and you can stay scruffy.